Welcome back to Crimson Universe Pro Wrestling Rising Spirit number seven. Sure hope I'm right. Sure hope when you, you're watching this, the title is also what I'm saying. Number seven. Anyway, we're going to get straight into our first match, which is for the Crimson Universe Pro Wrestling Rising Spirit Championship. The new champion, if you missed last uh, the last episode, number six. Fingers crossed. Um, go back and watch that one. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm glad you're back after you watch that one. Uh, Kenshiro, the new Rising Spirit champion, will uh, defend against none other than Tiger Mask. And here comes the challenger. Former Cup Dub World Champion. It is Tiger Mask. Here in Fire Pro record of zero and one, but Tiger Mask. I believe a former two-time uh, champion and is currently tied with uh, Green Man for most defenses, well, combined defenses with seven. But here is the new uh, Cup Dub Rising Spirit Champion. Recently winning it from in the last episode from Noriko Takaya. Interesting to see how he goes in his first challenge against, again, a, a former Cup Dub world champion. In some, in some people's minds, the greatest, uh, one of the greatest Cup Dub champions, considering he has, well, he's tied from most defenses combined. Total of seven defenses over his two reigns. Whereas, say, someone like Green Man, seven defenses over uh, four reigns. However, our current Cup Dub champion, Master Wado, has something to say about that. Four successful defenses, 186 days. I'm surprised to see Tiger Mask here challenging for the Rising Spirit Championship. Um, I would think that his eyes would maybe be towards reclaiming that Cup Dub Championship from Master Wado. But it's actually been a while since we've seen Tiger Mask. Maybe this is his opportunity to get the ball rolling and get some momentum back here at Crimson Universe Pro Wrestling. And there is those rapid chops to the side of the head from Kenshiro. And Kenshiro in control of Tiger Mask as he pounds him to the mat. Back and forth. There's a pin attempt from Tiger Mask, only a one count on the champion. The champion dragging Tiger Mask towards the center, spitting head kick to the back of the head. Kenshiro loves, absolutely loves, to wallop you in the back of the head. Maybe he knows of a pressure point there that the rest of us cannot see. Able to break out of that one and a sliding drop kick to the face there of Tiger Mask. And now he's going to mount it again, like I said, from the back. Horrible for your vision as well to be mounted like that with your face into the ground. And oh my god, almost putting Tiger Mask away there would have been a real dominant defense to take it like that. And again, really close. Way, way closer you would than you would expect on a former Cup Dub champion such as Tiger Mask, two-time champion. But since the jump to Fire Pro, uh, a lot of new competitors kind of... What's he doing here? Oh my god, he, 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 he took that from Noriko Takaya. He learned her Super Inazuma kick and tried to use it for his own. Absorbing the knowledge 
But as I was saying, a new um, quality of competitor has kind of arisen here in Fire Pro Cup dub. Uh, the old guard of the 2K days may, you know, don't hold the, the strength that they once did here at Crimson Universe. Pro Wrestling and... Kenshiro just knocked Tiger Mask clean out for his first successful defense of the Rising Spirit Championship. Holy shit. Just out. Um, a bit of a change of pace from last the last episode with a match like that, but Kenshiro showing that he is not messing around here with the Rising Spirit Championship. Next up, we will be having a women's match as Tam and Akano takes on Suzu Suzuki. Coming out first, none other than Suzu Suzuki. Young competitor looking to make a name for herself here. From the Universe Pro Wrestling, record of one, two, and zero. And I mean, what? What a name she can make for herself if she's able to beat this woman. Now, there was a bit of controversy back at Window of the World, our last live show on Twitch forward slash Crimbo Ash. Fatal four way match for the Women's Championship came down to just the champion, Jamie Hayter, and this woman, Tam Nakano, who went to a draw. Count out draw, that's why count outs are off, baby. Because of this woman. And you've got to think though, with that draw to her name against the women's champion, she has a, she has a, she has a uh, claim. Her record does not uh, have the one draw as it should. Someone fire that guy, but she has a claim potentially for another match, another opportunity, as the champion did not defeat her. Here we go, no count out. Suzu Suzuki and Tam Nakano in action. For Tam, if she's able to win this, uh, able to make a better claim for that. Uh, opportunity that she may feel that she deserves uh one on one with jamie hater again it was a fatal four-way match it just came down to tam and jamie hater as the final two competitors before going to a count out draw but for suzu to be able to beat tam here maybe hijack that dream and and go to our next show every frog has its day and take on Jamie Hayter for the Cup Dub Women's Championship. To which Jamie Hayter has become uh, the longest reigning champion, overtaking Rhea Ripley's uh, legendary run in 2K with the Cup Dub Women's Championship. Snapmare takeover and a single leg boss and crab applied. And a headlock. Now applied from Suzu Suzuki, working on the neck of Tam. And back and forth we go. The chest kicks from Tam and the forearms from Suzu. And Suzu getting the better of Tam and a kick to the back. Suzu is fired up here. Suzu Suzuki as well. No stranger to uh, from the Universe Pro Wrestling Rising Spirit. As she has challenged unsuccessfully um, for the Cup Dub uh, Rising Spirit Championship in the past. Great submission there from Tam. Into the ropes, slide under, and a huge head kick. I'm su I would be surprised if. Okay, Suzu Suzuki is still with us. I thought she, her, she would be knocked clean out, much like in our opening contest, Tiger Mask was by Cup Dub Rising Spirit Champion. Kenshiro. Huge head kick there from Suzu Suzuki and 
Sending it down. What is Tam looking for here? The athleticism from Tam. And now into the ropes goes Suzu with a great arm drag. Sending Suzu crashing into the mana. Huge head kick. Buzzsaw kick. Snapmare though from Suzu reclaiming control. Some Mac grappling and just a stomp to the back. Interesting to use that kind of amateur wrestling style to then just go for a stomp to the back. But that's the kind of scrappy competitor that Suzu Suzuki is. No stranger to deathmatch wrestling as well. So you know she's capable of anything. And there's that buzzsaw kick once again. But Tam snap suplex sending Tam to the outside. Now Tam on the outside is deadly. But only with a count out. Which are no longer on thanks to her and Jamie Hayter. Combination of kicks there from the Stardom Dream. Into the ropes goes Tam and a huge head kick there from Suzu. Great takedown there. Anna, a cover, but not enough. Put Tam away. And there it is. The Twilight Dream. And not enough to make this a nightmare for Suzu Suzuki. She's still in this. Her dream is still alive. And that dream right now is to beat Tam. And maybe go on to take on Jamie Hayter for the Women's Championship. And oh my god. The sliding German suplex in the ropes. Suzu back in the ring. And a German suplex. Beautiful bridge. Is that enough? Shoulders are down. Tam barely, barely able to... Get out of that. And Tam going for a dive. Suicide dive to the outside. Onto the... The ramp and... Fuck Buster on the outside. That padding is... There's padding there, but it's sure not... It's sure not thick. And right under that padding is concrete. There is not much give on the outside of the ring. And, and this is what I mean. Tam is quite dangerous here on the outside, but has somewhat lost that edge due to the fact that the countouts are no longer in effect. Huge cutter there from Tam. And what's she going for up here? Huge diving drop kick to the head of Suzu Suzuki into the ropes. Goes Tam. Almost like a blockbuster there. And a knee strike, but Suzu straight back into control. Getting the crowd hyped up. Back and forth we go. Firmly on the side of Suzu Suzuki, though. And, oh, she's fired up. Kick to the head. Oh, but she may have hurt her knee on the way down. There's that cutter once again from Tam, and she's going back up. I think for that... Drop kick this time to the back of the head of Suzu. Into the ropes. She tried to go for that knee attack once again, but this time it did not work. Great suplex there from Suzu to reclaim uh, control. Get the momentum back on her side. Super kick. Um, send her into the red turnbuckle. Maybe should have just capitalized due to the days that Suzu was in, but Suzu may be a little bit hurt here. There's that float over from Tam. Great German suplex with a bridge. Is that enough? And Tam able to put away Suzu Suzuki with a Ju German suplex. And the bridging pin. Big win for Tam as she looks towards Jamie Hayter perhaps. But every frog has its day. Another great match between these competitors. And we'll be heading now into our main event. As TJP makes another defense of his window of the world championship. This time against the cleaner and the best bout machine. He is Kenny Omega. Coming out first... It sounds like the Devil's Sky is upon us. 
complete with intro. Former Cup Dub Champion. Former IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Former AEW Champion. There's not much this man has not done in this business. Now, I'm no Justin Roberts. I don't have the full intro for him. But I know that he has a nice place in North Carolina. He is the cleaner. And he's looking to clean up TJP here and take that cup dub win the world championship for himself record of two and one however we learned in a previous match that maybe maybe our record keeper is not to be trusted now we saw in the previous episode of Rising Spirit that TJP was able to defend this title against another former IWGP heavyweight champion in Tetsuya Naido. Maybe looking to prove himself against these top dogs, these uh, people that a lot of wrestlers consider to be the best in the world. As his, as his theme states, where are your heroes now? Because he's lining them up and using them as his defenses for the window of the world. This will be his third match. The first match was the five way in which he won it. The second against Tetsuya Naito. And here is the third against Kenny Omega. If Kenny Omega is able to win this though, he will take um, over from where TJP left off and will need two matches to complete the window of the world and get the opportunity to cash it in for an uh, for a chance at any championship here in in the universe pro wrestling. Yeah. Now you got to think for Kenny Omega is absolutely going to be gunning for that Cup Dub World Championship that he once held. Kenny Omega uh, defeating defeated CBT Wizard. Uh, for it, only to lose it to Sephiroth. 69 days later, two successful defenses to his name. Yeah. TJP. Yeah. It's unclear what belt he will be gunning for at this stage, but considering the caliber of individuals that he has been facing yeah. so far on his Window of the World uh, campaign, it would not be too strange to assume that it would be the Cup Dub World Championship that he would be gunning for. Back and forth, Kenny Omega getting the better of that exchange. And now working on the back of TJP. You've got to think as well, TJP, um, he's been wrestling a lot. You know, he, he wrestled in that five way to win this belt. He defended against Tetsuya Naito in the last episode of Rising Spirit. Whereas Kenny Omega, here at least from the Universe Pro Wrestling, we haven't seen him for a while. Could, could these defenses and uh, against these high caliber athletes catch up with TJP over time and cause him to become fatigued? Great vertical suplex there, sending Kenny Omega spilling to the outside and going out there once again. Uh, the the wrestlers here at Crimson Universe Pressing love the outside area, but with the count outs now off, it is all just about. And, and, and maybe that's it. They know that there's no count outs so that they can go out here and deal as much damage as they want to with no repercussions maybe uh, there should be a conversation with management with the referees to maybe bring the count outs back it's i understood that the fans of crimson universe pro wrestling were not happy 
uh, with the draw between Cam and Jamie Hayter. But at the same time, the wrestlers are making the most of this situation. Great heads to the takedown by brawling and doing a lot of damage to, on the outside. And oh, great. Reversing that double underhook into a backslide. And able to reverse what I assume was a back suplex. Back suplex attempt by Kenny Omega. Great submission right now. Really pulling back the arm. And we know that Kenny Omega... Um, he went through some really tough times with his body after his AEW title run. Um, and you got to think some of that might still be lingering. Some of those injuries around the shoulders and the neck, especially. Those are the areas. Especially, oh my god, and one winged angel! New, new window! And TJP kicks out of the, win, uh, out of the one winged angel. Quite insane. Not many people can say that. Ushiguroshi. And there is that rain trigger. And here comes... Oh, I thought he was going for the V trigger, but maybe TJP just able to step out of it. There's that head kick. TJP needed that. Gonna go maybe for a desperation cover here. Yeah, definitely out of desperation. Didn't was able to just get that distance and thought let's let's capitalize pjp oh he's gone for that head kick again but kenny omega had it scouted oh and a sudden pin attempt not enough though put away the cleaner just yet into the ropes as his takedown and oh an amazing uh, head scissors takedown there from TJP. And there it is. He, he tapped out um, Naito with that last week. However, Kenny Omega's got a bit more in the in the tank with that Uranagi. And here comes V Trigger, the height that he got on that jump. And you, I thought maybe he was setting up for the one-winged angel. But no. Into the blue turnbuckle we go. A flurry of lefts and rights from TJP there in that blue turnbuckle. What is TJP thinking here? There is that sent on. And able to roll that up into a pinning predicament, but Kenny Omega knows his way out of a predicament like that. But up and there's that head kick again, middle of the ring. He seems much more aware with it this time and only 2.9 just at the last second. Kenny Omega was able to kick out. Oh, there's that suplex. Back suplex. Nice combination there of a snap vertical suplex into the back suplex. But with the underhook, the backslide, is that enough? Kenny, uh, TJP has all of these pinning combinations. Not able. Again, I think Naito might have tweaked his uh, ankle on that last episode. He tapped out right away. And up and stalling with it. Head kick. But Kenny, uh, Kenny straight up to his feet. V-trigger to the back of the head. Ushiguroshi. But, oh, no. Kenny able to get out of it. And here it comes again, one winged angel. That's gotta be it. Bang. Kenny Omega. Is your new window of the world champion. And like I said, we'll, we'll take from where TJP left off and need, needs two more matches to hold on to that window of the world and cash in for another title shot. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. A surprise uh, to see TJP fall there, but like I said, um, the, the fatigue from that match with Naito may have gotten to him, and Kenny Omega, the best bout machine, cleaned up TJP and will be going forward as window of the world champion.